you're listening to the Coaching Cast podcast with Susie and Lisa. We are super lucky to have this seventh season sponsored by our friend and YouTube's top breath coach, Mike Mayer from Take a Deep Breath. Mike is the first official sponsor of this podcast and specialises in reducing stress and anxiety through practical, fun and science-based breathing techniques. You can get started for free by clicking on the link in the show notes and downloading a free guided audio breathing exercise from Mike. Say goodbye to stress and hello to a more relaxed and chilled state of mind. And if you're interested in being a sponsor on this podcast, you can contact us by emailing hello at thecoachingcast.co.uk. Hello, I'm Susie. And I'm Lisa, and this is The Coaching Cast. We are the no-nonsense podcast, chatting about the things impacting you at work right now, helping you to survive and thrive in today's ever-changing workplace. We discuss different topics each episode, sharing our ideas, hints, and top tips from our experiences of working in the corporate world, running our own businesses, and also being qualified coaches. We also try to have a few laughs along the way too, because taking yourself too seriously, well, it's just boring. <laughs> we hope you enjoy listening. In today's episode, we're kicking off our brand new season discussing whether leaders have a shelf life. So stay with us and enjoy. So before we get into this brand new episode of season seven, Lisa, how have you been? What have you been up to? Well, I have, I have evolved myself since the last season. Oh, I've right. made some, okay. I've made some physical changes. Right. Tell me more. So you can't see this physical change that well at the moment because of my earphones. But to celebrate the 39th year of my birth, which was on the 27th of December, I got an ear piercing. Yes. I got a new ear piercing. It's the first one I've had since I was five years old. So (laughs) it was a big deal. But I've got, I think they call it a helix piercing. I think that's what it's called. Well, look, I can't really, I'll have to lift an ear thing. An ear thing? What do I call these things? Headphones. That's it. I couldn't even think. Yeah, you can tell it's our first episode back. Um, there it is. Look at that. There it is. There it is. Shining so, away. If you're not watching this incredible episode with all of its rich content, you will not understand what I'm doing. But I've essentially lifted off my left headphone and I'm showing my piercing, which is on my left ear in the top there. I mean, it's still a bit sore, but it will continue to be sore if I continue to catch it. So <laughs> I had a slight incident in the shower on Sunday because I was washing my hair. And I've got long, fairly long hair. Anyway, what I hadn't realised was that the hair kind of wrapped itself around the piercing and I yanked the hair. Oh, <laughs> oh my God. That was painful. That was like a, a new kind of pain I've not really experienced before. I mean, I'm getting no sympathy from any of my close family members who just as sort of have the view of, well, you mutilated yourself in the first place, which is, it seems like such a, what a boring middle class, like adult thing to say if you get an ear piercing. Well, you did <laughs> mutilate yourself. I was just like, oh, God, look at me fighting against the establishment of which I live. That's how crazy I am. I tell you, when I when I announced on my birthday that I was going to take myself off to the nearest town, which actually it wasn't the nearest town. It was the next town over Canterbury because I'm from Kent. I was down there for Christmas and my birthday. I did get quite a few raised eyebrows from uh, unsupportive family members, but I, I, I worked through it. I decided, no, I wasn't con- going to conform to the constraints of my family unit and what I've been brought up with I'm going to go and get my ear piercing that I've wanted for you know about three years that's how long it's taken me to build up the courage (laughs) absolutely do whatever you want to do that you know makes you happy it's your yeah your ears it's my ears yeah I mean my little sister still had to come and hold my hand because the the dynamic of our relationship is she may be five years younger but she is the rock for me, <laughs> not particularly the other way around. So she came with me and held my hand, which Aww. I'm a little bit pathetic. 
I mean, it was kind of a similar story when I turned 21 and I was I was very ill for my 21st birthday. I had way too much fun. There's a story there about getting thrown out of a club for falling asleep in a toilet, that kind of thing. Right. You know, it's a rite of passage, I think, when you're that age. Well, my little (laughs) sister had to like literally bathe me the next day in the bath. Right. Which, you know, what what an experience for a a growing, developing 16 year old to be washing your 21 year old sister. (laughs) And getting the puke out of her hair. So we have that kind of a relationship. She's uh, <laughs> She tends to look up to me, not the other way around. So, yeah, so she came along and held my hand. <laughs> so what about you, Suze? How have you been since we last caught up for Christmas? Okay. Um, so I've been doing the obligatory... Well, I tried to do obligatory dry jam. I didn't last that long. I last I lasted about two and a half weeks without any form yep, of Yeah, yeah. Well, because I spoke to you during beverage. that time and you hadn't had a drink. So yeah. something happened. You had a slip after we finished talking to you. I had a you. slip. Yeah, you sent me to drink. No, <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised. I wouldn't be surprised. It wouldn't be the first. <laughs> um, and yeah, so then I, yeah, I did slip up. But I did get back on it. Like I did then kind of, not drink so yeah I've not done as well as I would have liked but anyway I I did you know try and that's the main well, thing I've drank a lot less yeah than I did I've, in December and as you know because I did share I've been doing damp January yes I love this description. which I've stolen off somebody else uh, I stole it off um a chap in my local pub in the Cotswolds he shared this phrase with me and I particularly liked it so damp January so I just drank less now damp I jam. think I think I managed to go six days straight with no alcohol, which I have to admit, this is a bit of a sad admission, probably. I think it's the longest I've gone without alcohol in 20 years or something, probably. <laughs> um, you know, in all fairness, I can do one day off, two days off, but I've never done six days off, I don't think. Not unless I've been really ill, but even <laughs> when I've been really ill, I think I've probably drunk on day three or four. So, <laughs> yeah, so it, I mean, that was an achievement and actually not too difficult. And then I've carried it on since I've been yeah. here. So um, I've also been Stacey Soloming my house, if that's a phrase. And um, Steve is getting like, my husband is getting more annoyed with me because he comes home from work and there's just more and more storage solutions <laughs> popping up. Have you got a label house. maker as well then? No, I haven't. But that's, that is a brilliant idea. It's my birthday next week, so I might say yeah, I need a label maker. You need to get a label maker. Um, yeah. So I'm so I'm a very organised, orderly, and tidy person in general. When my house is a mess, I hate it, and I've had to really readjust my expectations because since I've had a child, that's just not possible all the time. Otherwise, it's just so stressful. Um, and so I've ha- I have had to like re kind of adjust what tidy looks like. But when my house is untidy or there's lots of clutter it affects my mood massively right and then I don't know I just I always do this in new year in January I think it's because I don't go out very much in January (laughs) because I've either got no money I'm doing dry jan etc um and I start like tidying cupboards and you know like bits and bobs that I should have sorted out and I start like like for example I've just suddenly decided I don't like my downstairs um toilet anymore like the, the the way the room's decorated so we're like redecorating it so I've got stuff everywhere now because we're redecorating it <laughs> but then I'm like this means I can buy more like storage solutions and I'm just obsessed with storage solutions so I've got this do you know what a lazy susan is yeah like this turnaround thing yeah I've put one in the fridge Stacey right? Solomon does that that's a Stacey Solomon hack and I've well I've only just come across it and I put this lazy season this like turntable thing in the fridge with all my like glass jars like yeah, condiments yeah, yeah. etc it's a really good idea and then you can just spin it around and get what you need yeah and it gives me so much joy when <laughs> I spin it around I'll be honest like literally <laughs> makes my day Steve's like what is this and I'm like what is, my, is my lazy why have we got a lazy season in the fridge and I'm like <laughs> He's like, it's circular. This is not maximizing the space. I mean, the there is that. Actually takes... I was like, all right, all right. I'm a bit... Look at all these things I've managed to stack together. Anyway, I'm getting so much joy. I can tell he's getting a bit like, do we need more storage solutions? You're just creating storage solutions for no particular and reason. And to gather here. more rubbish, I'm assuming. Yeah. Um. So yeah, it's been a it's been a month of kind of like organizing things I am absolutely in my element like, <laughs> I, and I've and I've come across this new Instagram page which is not new it's just new to me the style sisters oh my goodness I am obsessed with their Instagram page oh, they're all about 
organizing and like um folding things and all of that stuff so oh I'm well into that at the moment right everyone we're all got to check out the style sisters is that right style style yeah. sisters right style sisters right so that's the top tip for today's episode everyone check out really style is. sisters instagram yeah. page and get yourself a lazy season for that fridge and a label maker and a label anyway. maker I'm putting that on my birthday list now <laughs> um Okay, so on that note, shall we um, start with today's episode? Yep, let's go for it. During January, the New Zealand Prime Minister, Jacinda Ardern, announced her resignation. She's been one of the most notable leaders of our modern world, rising to the position at only 37 years old making her the youngest female head of government in the world when she was elected in 2017. She has successfully led New Zealand through the COVID pandemic, the Christchurch mosque shootings and the White Island volcanic eruption. She has resigned, citing burnout and a lack of energy to continue to do the job once again demonstrating her humaneness and authenticity, which at the coaching cast we've talked about before and we love. This turn of events made us stop and reflect on whether leaders have a shelf life. So, Lisa, what are your thoughts about this idea or concept of a leadership shelf life? Yeah, so I actually spoke about this a little bit in the middle of last year, and it was triggered by the Queen's Jubilee at the time, because the Queen in the UK had been like one of our longest reigning, I think she is the longest reigning monarch, actually. And therefore, from a famous leader perspective, she's the longest, most established that I think we've ever had and possibly the world's seen. And I remember seeing a few debates at the time around whether or not it was time for her to take a step back and allow Charles to come forward, even though she was still totally capable and, you know, was still doing the role particularly well. And I thought it was a really interesting concept at the time. And it it made me then reflect on leaders, leaders knowing when potentially it's time to move on whether actually that is the right thing to do and whether it's something we should all expect that leaders should never be in position for too long. Because I think when you look at the world and its political leaders, I think they're examples of those political leaders who actually have been in position for way too long and who, if anything, refuse to step down and they become extremely toxic. And I know I'm using probably quite an extreme example when I say Robert Mugabe, um, Um, who was the president of Zimbabwe, but he is one of those. And I think there are many that are of that nature where actually they stayed beyond what is deemed healthy, what is deemed good. And I think it's because for me, it's knowing when time has changed, things have moved on and you've changed as well, possibly. And what is now required in the role may no longer be what you can offer. And I know for me, when I've thought about it in terms of my own career, I've definitely got to the point in certain roles where I've made the decision to move on. Yes, for my ongoing development and success, and I may have sought um, progression, but I've done quite a few sideways moves in my career. And I'm a huge advocate for moving sideways as well, because I think actually you can gain so much experience and learning and grow from taking a step just slightly in a different direction. It's not always about going up. Um, but I, I've, I've recognized that actually it's time for me to go because I've got no, I've no longer got anything to offer. I've got no fresh ideas I might have lost energy so I was actually very I've actually very much admired Jacinda for actually stepping up and saying because I do think that requires a a certain amount of stepping up especially when you talk about self-awareness and being vulnerable and just opening herself up honestly I, I think you know I admired her to say publicly 
I think I'm done. Like I've done what yeah. I've done and I'm proud of what I've done, but I don't have anything more to offer now. And actually there is an element here of, and I don't know whether anyone's really come out and said it that clearly, but of just not wanting to do it anymore. Like I think, you know, people have talked about the whole burnout thing and as though like, not that she was forced, but I think there's this element of like, oh, there was something else at play. So she was kind of you know, like forced to like make that decision. I think, well, not necessarily. It sounds, yeah, I think she's chosen and very honestly, and she's chosen based on she's got other priorities she now wants to fulfill, which, you know, family, etc. But yeah, I think I definitely think it's true. And I don't think it's a bad thing. I think what's bad is when leaders don't recognize it and they don't recognize it in themselves. Yeah. Because I wrote that I felt that leaders only become ineffective and even detrimental when they stop checking in on themselves and they stop looking ahead, moving forwards, stop listening, stop challenging themselves as well as their teams. So they just become too comfortable, switch off, and they just, yeah, they just stick. (laughs) Yeah, I think I can, you know, I can relate it to some of my own experiences in that for me, my feelings changed. So, you know, I think I have been in situations where I'd gone into roles, some of which were leadership positions, some which weren't. And to start with, and for quite a, a period of time, you know, I've got that fire in my belly. I was all about um creative problem solving had lots of ideas working at quite a lot of pace I was really energized yeah and really wanting to kind of Monday morning I was like yes let's go you know really into it like really engaged and part of that's probably my personality as well but you know that's because that role was exciting and there was lots to do and lots of opportunity and things and when I then found like over a period of time that those feelings have melted away and actually now I've got different feelings about that role for example I don't know like a Sunday evening dread yeah I didn't have that before or you know my excitement about solving a challenge wasn't quite to the level that it was 12 18 months ago or whenever and there's some distinct changes in how I'm feeling about that role that's when I have also started to realize like it is time now to think about what is next and if you've just really got enough left in the tank to give to what's needed and I think in my last big leadership position in my corporate career I knew that I was coming to a conclusion in that role because that those feelings were were there definitely and I'd kind of got to the point where it was like some of the same challenges in a different cycle and I was just like I've already thought about these and tried to solve these a number of times and we have and things have changed and now they're back on the table I just I just haven't got the want to do that anymore like yeah. that's just not this that's just not right for me yeah so yeah I think it's an interesting concept because you could also argue on the flip side that actually you know we now just do operate in a world which isn't the same which is kind of changing all the time and so doing the same job year after year in today's world isn't really a thing anymore so actually you're kind of always reinventing in a sense what your job looks like what your job is Mm. I suppose the question is are you reinventing yourself potentially as a leader alongside it yeah yeah absolutely I think that is the point I, I think that that is exactly it things are always changing how are you adapting and flexing to support that yeah and I think this does take a huge amount of self-awareness you know a a huge amount of self-awareness to acknowledge whether you are the right person whether you've got the right skills whether you've got the best interests for the city you know do you know what I mean it's like yeah I think that's the energy I think yeah the energy and there's nothing wrong with saying that you're not And it's not you, but that takes courage to do that once you even have the self-awareness to have identified it. And I do think leaders get stuck in their egos and there's that sense of not wanting to quit, not wanting to be seen to have failed. 
But actually, that's not what we're talking about here. And I think it's reframing that whole notion of if you step aside, it's it's not that you've not achieved. It's that it's just it's time for you to give that to somebody else. Um, it doesn't take away anything of the good that you've done, which yeah, I, which I do yeah. think that's where you know Jacinda's continued to be such an incredible role model she was a great role model in her role and she's now being a role model even beyond it by doing what she's done yeah it's um it is a really interesting concept and I think thinking about then the flip of that so you know do you think you can extend your shelf life like should you should you extend your shelf life as a leader um I think this takes a huge amount of self-reflection and I think you have to really like tap into yourself and be ask yourself some of those honest questions and if you're struggling to do that and struggling to get clarity then gain support of somebody else to help you to do that Mm -hmm. it's someone you trust or someone who's completely unbiased totally unrelated so you know that's where I think a coach can come in really helpfully or a mentor or somebody who can just get you talking aloud and exploring ideas, exploring how you feel, giving you some different perspective. Um, But I think you do have to ask yourself, you know, about your motivations, you know, why do you want to stay in the role? What, what's important to you about it? What do you want to achieve? You know, where do you see yourself in 12 months time? You know, because if you can't really articulate that or even if you are trying to and it feels difficult, challenging, it feels lethargic when you're doing it. It doesn't give you energy like you don't feel excited. I think some of that is telling you all that you need to know, which is you're not in the right place. Um, And, you know, again, I think if you're able to like find somebody you trust as I said, whether it's a professional who can help you with the thinking, but even to give you some feedback. So like a, a slightly different person, but someone who can actually talk it through with you and share with you what they see, what they experience. Just to give you something else to think about if you're really struggling to answer that yeah. for yourself, I think. I think, you know, you. I think you can as a leader extend your shelf life if you want to, leading into your point. But there are some examples Um, especially in the sporting world so in football where people have stayed so let's take Sir Alex Ferguson he stayed his tenure at Manchester United Mm. was was very long so he was a a, a, you know um, a leader there with a a long uh, longevity but actually one of the things that he did was that he was very good at reinventing himself in that position Mm. and obviously you know I can't speak for him I've never spoken to him. I'd love to. <laughs> Alex, if um, you'd like to join us on the podcast, <laughs> you are always welcome here. <laughs> Any contacts, please let us know. Um, but one of the things I suppose that's widely acclaimed in the in the sense of why he stayed in that position so long is that he he got a lot of energy and motivation from that reinvention. Mm. And he reinvented what the leader needed to do in each of those times. Uh, and so that looked quite different. And I think it was quite progressive yeah. in that period of time. He didn't stagnate. He he wanted to evolve. And I think that's what we're talking about here is actually what is your, what is your desire? What is your need? Where do you get that energy? Yeah. Is that energy there to evolve and to reinvent yourself in that position um, to an extent? Not yeah. completely. Sometimes you don't need to. Um, and... In, in this particular instance, I think, you know, he didn't become stuck in his ways. There were there were chapters to each mm. of his kind of tenure, which he navigated and then kind of, yeah, used to reinvent his position and the role of his position. Um, and other, other certain figures, especially in um, football, haven't like done that as well or as much because they find that level of self-awareness I think quite harder to do so when I was talking to my husband about this topic he was saying to me about um Mourinho who obviously went to Manchester United United a lot um later but his his approach it, it, it is very kind of this is how I am this is how it is and over time his ability to evolve I think has um 
kind of made it harder for him to be achievable and to and to last longer in some of those leadership positions mm. because that self reflection piece, that self awareness piece, maybe isn't quite as strong. I don't know, but um, it's interesting to see how you know that plays out in certain sectors outside of business yeah. as well. Yeah, and and I think it's like when you lead people, it's not just about you. So I think you do have to ask your question yeah. as to like what does the team need, and do I have yes. it? Like, do I have what they require? Because if you don't, that's also information for you to use in respect of that self-reflection piece and making a decision as to what the next step is. Because that team is what is delivering the performance. Yeah. And it requires um, the the right leader to to drive it. And so I think there is that element of, again, when you, when you see the leaders that become too comfortable stick around and don't have the self-awareness don't acknowledge that it's time to move on it's actually really selfish because I do think you see how it then detrimentally impacts everybody around them Mm. yeah I think it's if you know that things are not progressing things aren't changing i.e if you're in a team and you can see that like we're still in this place we haven't moved forward either in our performance or in our kind of cultural changes and our and on our ways of working um <clears throat> you can then start getting quite frustrated because you're like things need to change mm. and you know behavior also breeds behavior i've said that quite a lot it you know in previous episodes but it is true Mm. and so sometimes you've got to kind of look at yourself and think about what am I also kind of role modeling what am I representing yeah yeah totally because some of the best leaders I've ever worked for were those actually that never really stayed in their roles for longer than two years because they they literally came in delivered what they set out to achieve and then acknowledge that well I've done what I set out to I've I've gotten out of this what I'd like to I've contributed what I wanted to and now it's time for me to move on to the next thing and to keep growing and you know they were the best leaders like I there is a quote and I haven't got it in my head but it's like you know the best leaders are always those that move and who you then miss terribly you don't miss the ones that stick around and (laughs) and and you know are there forever more because they're not the ones that really are, I think, really driving the change and really driving growth because they're not role modeling it themselves either. And so, yeah, I think I was always so sad to see some of the best leaders go and I never wanted them to, but I respected it so much and I knew it was the right thing. Yeah. And I knew that it was a compliment to them and even to us as a team that it was time that they were ready to move on and continue to grow and they were going to continue to be successful and what a great thing to aspire to be. But actually it was a compliment to us as a team because we were ready for them to leave because, you know, we'd grown too, um, even if it felt hard. (laughs) (laughs) And I always miss them. Um, Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. I think that danger in staying too long is interesting because I do think it can filter down just to kind of build on your point then like filter down into the team as well so I had an an example where I worked for somebody who'd been in a a leadership position for a really long time and actually they were really good at what they did they um were still getting energy and, and I think they were reinventing themselves into various chapters within that that role um but I think because we really enjoyed working for that person in, in the team and we knew where we were at and we had re- established a relationship. I reflect back now and I think actually at times perhaps we weren't growing either because we were comfortable yeah. and like we were safe working with that person. And to your point, that person was still growing, I think, but they weren't necessarily like role modeling, big stretch, big growth, big development. And weren't probably Um, being as challenging either. Yeah. And so weren't necessarily encouraging it in in more overt ways with us either. And so I think maybe did I stay in my position in that team a bit too long as well? Mm. Probably. And I think that's probably because you know, I did really enjoy it. And obviously you want to stay somewhere you enjoy. Absolutely. But I'd probably reached my tenure or hit my kind of shelf life in that role a good, maybe a 12 months before I actually did go in the end. Yeah. And I think as well, like, I suppose this kind of is building more again on the point I made about 
being aware of the impact it's having on other people and what the team needs. Yeah. Actually, don't forget that if you're the leader, no one else is. So actually you moving on and continuing your growth opens up the opportunity for other people to grow and to try that opportunity. But if you just plug it for a long period of time, you're not giving your team the the space to themselves step up. Actually, that they, they may just continue to step out because there's nowhere else to go. Um, I know that's definitely true in some teams where, you know, there's been those of us who've really wanted the opportunity pro- to progress. But, you know, you come out with that kind of s- statement of like, oh, yeah, but, you know, they're never going to go. <laughs> they're not going anywhere. They've been there for years. They have no intention or not showing any signs of of moving. So what opportunity is there for me then? You know, you do have to you create space and again that for me comes back to like what is the responsibility of the leaders well it's to encourage and promote personal development growth challenge stretch you'd want to lift other people up with you but you won't be able to do that if you're just staying where you are (laughs) yeah yeah I think in those instances I've experienced it I think sometimes there's been reservation for those leaders to go because they have like a huge amount of knowledge Mm. Yeah, but that's the so, danger, isn't it? We all exactly. Get, I mean, that's the old school attitude of getting hooked on knowledge and thinking and that, that knowledge, knowledge transfer. Safe. Yeah, and that knowledge transfer, thinking about well, that's not going to be there anymore. And we've got all this experience, all these knowledge, and absolutely, it is you know vital and adds input. But there are ways that that knowledge can be transferred to protect that understanding. Mm. But again, this comes back absolutely to your point at the start is about just that individual whoever it is in that position just thinking what is best for you as well as a person like if you are genuinely going back to the Alex Ferguson story if you are genuinely enjoying this and you know get energy and motivation and purpose from navigating different chapters within a role reinventing what that role looks like and shaping it yourself then that's absolutely like fantastic and there's a piece there just about that wider role around growing supporting developing others Mm -hmm. as well and if you're still doing that then brilliant but I think if it's that check with yourself around it if that isn't there for you as it once was you know is it time to perhaps go and and move on and and think about what the right opportunity and and next step is for you yeah and it's actually it's doing the right thing for you too yeah, exactly. Like, actually, don't forget about the opportunities it could create and the growth and the the higher success from changing. You know, there's nothing... If In some ways, I think that's a, um, that's a leader if, when they're sticking around of actually admitting, non-verbally, but they're admitting that they're too scared to go. Because mm. there's, you know, we're all human beings and we all have challenges at times around our confidence and our self-belief and change can be scary for lots of us and I think you know that can be true regardless of what role you're in at what level but I think it's actually at times acknowledging it and going yeah but there could be even better things to come because I know I know I made the decision to change roles when I felt either I'd achieved what I'd set out to and I felt really satisfied with that and I couldn't see what more I could do If I had no new ideas or fresh energy to contribute, which I think you've touched upon about the energy piece, to like maintain momentum or progress the team. Because I think, you know, I'm quite an, I'm quite an obvious person. I think you can tell when I'm, I've got high energy. You can tell when I'm passionate about things. I've got, I'm really enthusiastic and you can tell when I'm not, and I'm not very good at faking it either. So I don't really want to be in a team and being be in a leadership position if I don't feel that I've got that I'm not being authentic or genuine and I don't want to drive the wrong you know behavior in other people um so yeah so or if I felt that I didn't have what was necessary for the next stage that's definitely happened to me before where the team's been evolving in a direction that I thought you know what I can't follow or I can't be the leader of this because I'm not the right person I either didn't believe in what we were doing next or what was required I didn't have the right skill you know and I think that's fine because I think you're you're actually releasing it to go in the right direction with the right person mm-hmm. by admitting that and stepping away um or if I was just no longer interested like I think this is the other thing like it's okay to go oh I've done it for a while it doesn't interest me anymore I want to do something else yeah absolutely. 
Okay, so if you're listening to this um, and you're thinking, this is me in my current situation, <laughs> should I stay or should, should I, I stay go? or should I go? That has to be the theme tune for this episode. Well, oh, we're not allowed to copy the royal. We can't play it. Can't pay, pay the royalties. No. Well, I'll just get self funded, with... guys. Yes. Um, <laughs> I'll continue so... with my singing version. <laughs> should I what stay or are... should I go now? What are your top tips if for somebody who's listening to them thinking, this is me? Ooh, what are they? What would I start with? I think maybe if you're thinking this is you, it would be good to sort of start with what you suggested, Susie, which is that kind of like check in on yourself and go, you know, how am I feeling right now? You know, how excited am I about my job? You know, what do I want to achieve in this job? What's important about it for me? You know, I think I think it's doing taking the time to do that self-reflection before you decide to do anything. Because this isn't about going, oh my God, this is me, I need to leave. I think it's just checking in and going, have I got a bit more to give? Because it may be that you have. Maybe you have, you maybe you've got another 12 months, brilliant. And then you can plan your way out onto the next thing. So I think, you know, I think it is you've got to start with the self-reflection first and just question yourself a little bit. And as you know, if you answer the questions like, no, I've got this idea, this is what I vis- envisage for the team, I have got the energy, and you feel yourself getting excited, then you'll find where you are. <laughs> I think, but it may be that it's just not right now, but it's given you an idea of this is what possibly what's next as time passes and maybe put some time frames around it for yourself to give structure and focus so that you don't hang around for too long for yourself and for the team's sake. Mm, yeah. I think a lot of the top tips are are about actually internally, so reflecting yeah. internally to your point. Uh, to be a bit more specific, I would say like, <laughs> have you suddenly got a feeling of dread (laughs) that wasn't there because I think that's quite a big indicator yeah of of where you might be at um you know is that passion that fire in your belly to to want to get stuff done change things problem solve have impact um develop people you know has that stopped have you stopped Mm. caring question mark yeah yeah um, and I think another good indicator, and this isn't, you know, this is more about what's going on around you, but what is going on around you? Like, are people leaving? You know, have you suddenly had quite a big turn of events that people around you are suddenly leaving um, or suddenly chewing at the bit to kind of yeah grow and develop on the flip side what is going on around you and I think just spending a bit of time thinking about those things you can write them down you can work them out through a conversation either with a coach or somebody you trust you know at work or um, a colleague etc whoever that might be but I think putting some time aside just to prioritize that level of internal reflection and thinking you might find gives you a real good level of clarity around what is next what am I doing next and you know and you might be the next Sir Alex Ferguson reinventing yourself into the next chapter of this job and this role equally you might be like Jacinda Ardern and and decided actually I'm done like I want to go and do something different now and I'm just not into it anymore and that's totally fine as well but only you can come to that answer It's now time for Bullshit Bingo, where we call out phrases which get commonly used in the workplace, which make both of us cringe. Our Bullshit Bingo for today's episode came from one of our followers on Instagram, and it is Headwinds. So, Suze, what are your thoughts on this one then? (laughs) This, I like this one. I have to be honest, I've heard this quite a lot recently. Is it actually a thing, Headwind? That is a thing, isn't it? Isn't it like in in weather? I'm Googling it. Yeah, I think so. Oh, yeah, we've got another Google Googling one. Um, I've heard this quite a lot recently. 
Um, so I think it's a good one. Oh, yeah. In the context of, um, right, you know, there's some headwinds coming. We need to kind of get prepared around a plan, what we're going to do. We're reaching the end of the quarter. We've got a couple of headwinds on their way. So what are we going to do? Like, I've heard this a lot recently. Oh, yeah. what a lovely reference to the natural world. <laughs> yeah, so headwind. A wind blowing from directly in front, opposing forward motion. Mm. I mean, it is a real thing. It's not actually that bullshit, really, is it? I quite like this one. A headwind. Yeah. Talk um, about, like, you know, bring a bit of creativity to the language in a workplace setting. You know, really bring it to life. Can you imagine all of us sitting there like, there's a headwind. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know. I just got this image then of, like, people just, like, turning around on the spot in a circle, like, trying to be, like, a... A, a force of wind nature like a gale just going and going going round and round I don't know why that's just wow. how weird my head is oh, like everyone hold on yeah there's a, there's a headwind incoming <laughs> to the end of the quarter there's a headwind incoming wow. quick um Goodness so me. yeah this is I think this is quite a good one actually yeah, I like this one yeah um good this, yeah this, this is, is actually a lot more palatable than usual bullshit bingo it doesn't make me cringe anyway <laughs> Not a cringe one, but we do need one. we do need some more bullshit bingos. We do. Um, We're running dry. We are running a bit dry. So um, call out if you have or hear a bullshit bingo phrase at work. The first thing you need to do is is let us know. Yeah, like ignore what you're doing in the moment. <laughs> you need top to priority. A DM yeah, <laughs> on Instagram at the Coaching Cast with with that word or phrase. Or you can send us an email at hello at thecoachingcast.co.uk. Or you can even get in contact with us through our website, thecoachingcast.co.uk. Okay, There's so loads of ways. There's no, There's, There's no excuse. Stop what you're doing. There's no excuse. Stop that important customer meeting. And um, yeah, send us an email. Yes. Uh, and we will feature them in future episodes. <laughs> We are coming to the end of today's first episode in season seven, and we've been discussing whether leaders have a shelf life. Our top tips and recommendations from today's episode back on the whiteboard. It's back. Yep. Yeah, the third member back. of the coaching cast. Yes. Um, and Some they could argue are... the most important member of the coaching cast. <laughs> And they are this week, uh, some top tips, and they are more based on some self-reflection this week. So they're a little bit different to normal. And they are, number one, how do you feel on a Sunday night? So have you suddenly got a feeling of dread? Has that suddenly appeared from somewhere about going to work on Monday? Just ask yourself that question. How am I feeling on a Sunday night about that week ahead at work? Number two, on a scale of one to 10, how fired up do you feel at the moment about your job? Number three, where do you see yourself in six to 12 months time? What do you want? And finally, number four, look around you. What's happening? What's going on around you? And just take a moment to take stock and ask yourself uh, those four self-reflective questions and see where that takes you. We also have some further self-coaching questions, okay, to also prompt some thought and some thinking for you. Number one, how do you impact your team or those around you? Number two, what did you do today to help others develop and to perform? And number three, how could you find the courage to do what you think is right? Don't worry if you can't remember all of our top tips and also our self-coaching questions. They will be on our Instagram page at The Coaching Cast this week. So following the episode release on the Tuesday, the top tips and self-coaching questions will follow on the Wednesday and Thursday. We really hope you enjoyed today and our first episode of season seven and that you've got some new ideas to take away and try for yourselves. If you have any questions, thoughts or feedback, we would love to hear from you. You can contact us in three ways, like we've already mentioned in this episode. So we've got 
our email address, hello at thecoachingcast.uk. We have our Instagram account at thecoachingcast, so you can DM us there. And finally, you can contact us through our website, which is thecoachingcast.co.uk. Your support also helps more than you know. So if you like what you've heard today and in previous episodes, would like to help us grow this podcast and also most importantly, join our CBB community, aka our corporate bullshit bashers, then leave us a review on the Apple Podcast app. You have absolutely no idea how important these are. Hit subscribe wherever you listen and give us a follow on Instagram where we post our regular tips and also behind the scenes hilarity of Lisa and I planning, producing, recording these podcast episodes. Living. <laughs> Don't forget, you can also watch us on YouTube t- as well by searching for The Coaching Cast and all our episodes are also available to watch. Finally, we both love music and use it to motivate and energize us so we like to finish each episode with our personal song recommendation giving you positivity and energy as you launch into your next meeting it's my choice this week and i have chosen mimi webb red flags it's a great tune i don't think i know this yeah i need to go and check this out it's a good tune uh a, a regular um song on radio 2 as I always get my content from. How have I not heard it? I need to check this out. I know. Thank you so much for listening, CBBs. And remember, you've got this.